Right, so yeah, we're out in Yellowbinna wilderness area at the moment. We're doing a sandy Dunna uh, trapping exercise, just finding out areas that the species lives uh, within Yellowbinna and the in the wilderness area. Beautiful spot out here, nice day, nice uh, late autumn winter's day. Um, what we're looking for here, this area, is a nice Mallee uh, triodia mix. Uh, when we're looking for sandy Dunna sites, we're looking for really continuous patches of spinifex that continues pretty much all the way from the top of the dunes uh, down into the swale, into the flat part. So we're starting to put in a pit line here. Uh, the guys are sort of finishing everything off. They're just getting the pits in. Going from sort of mid-June down into the swales uh, in this nice, relatively healthy looking triadia. It's not senescing too much. Uh, they're all roughly the same height that we're sort of looking for for sand dune arts. They need this for cover. Uh, they hide in this sort of stuff at night and then run between finding um, mainly uh, small invertebrates as their main diet uh, throughout this area. That's it, biting. That's biting. Nothing. See the tail? So the underside's got this brush, which is the only done art that's got it. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It's like a pair of tweezers. Like someone holding your tweezers, it's nothing. time of year as well so they don't have pouching.
heading back from the Googs trip. 2022 Sandhill Dunart survey. We trapped in a different area for Sandhill Dunarts this year, a bit further north again. Uh, the theory is to keep searching for the Dunarts in new areas. Uh, we're trying to still refine our knowledge of the habitat that they like. Uh, so we sort of know roughly the, the area that they like to, to be in post fire, but we're still trying to work out that spin effects habitat that they like the most, what their most preferable is. So we ended up trapping this week. We found another uh, young female. She was about 32, 34 grams in weight. So she's probably from last year, which is good. So it's the same as last year. We've managed to find some young animals which are getting out and about. So it shows that they're still up here and breeding, which is fantastic. And it further refines uh, our thinking of where they're going to be and gives us a good idea of what is going to be key habitat, which has really been the focus of this project over the last couple of years. Uh, we've done some spin effects grass measurements as well. That's one of their key habitats that they live in. Uh, we like to do a, me a measurement of each of the trapping sites uh, and then we can compare it to other other locations that we're getting them or not getting them as well. So um, it'll provide even more of a a robust idea of what they like and what they need and it can it can really help inform future decision making in the park or other areas of the state or even interstate where sand and donuts still exist on uh, on what they need to look after. Uh, we also managed to go have a look at all of the cameras. Um, we haven't looked at too many of the actual SD cards but they need um, monitoring and just updating and refreshing every sort of six months, changing batteries and new SD cards. So that's the two uh, adaptive predator management experiment camera grids that we've got. So that's, uh, you know, we've got uh, a total of 20 cameras. We've got the two grids, one north, one south. Uh, we did them over the last two days as well. Uh, and then we also checked out two Felixes that we've got set up, which are just outside the grid. Uh, and that's hopefully protecting some mallee and sandhill dunnarts and other species. Every cat and fox that gets removed is beneficial for, for every uh, animal out here. The good thing is they're quite close to the camera grids, so we might be able to start to detect a change in fox and cat numbers that are being picked up by these camera grids. Uh, we've got one in a control area that's getting no control. That's treatment, so no felixes. Then we've got another camera grid north, which is quite close to the felixes. So Theoretically, the, the plan would be if we start noticing we're getting cats and foxes on the Felixes up north, which are targeting them and removing them theoretically, we should start seeing a decrease in the number that are getting picked up by the camera grid as well. Uh, they're very passive camera grids, so they're set up in a grid. There's no baits, there's no lures, uh, they're not on tracks, they're just totally out in the bush uh, at equal spacing or as close to equal spacing as possible, 500 metres apart and then you can have a good look at that. You're not doing any influence to the movement of animals. Um, it's just whatever comes past. It's a good way to work out densities. Um, yeah, so it'll be good. We can set ourselves up for next year. We can work out our next target area for sand hills, and then hopefully we can look at some mapping, large-scale mapping, uh, maybe by satellite. We can start to really indicate key areas in Yellowbinna and Yumbra, and as I said, in other areas in the state which we can then start to work on conservation methods, uh, hopefully keep securing sandy dunarts and other species uh, into the future.